get a view as well. Today I'm going to use this old 2200 watt cheap and nasty supermarket kettle heating element. And that's original cord. I'm going to put this in series of live and have a load. This could be a ballast. I'm going to use this as a ballast for anything that could be shorted. Repairing that battery charge I did in the previous video. I'm going to make a ballast out of this. Then, yeah, have that all ballasted in the case of any shorts. And then pick it up in the very and this will just take up all the ants. So anything there's a short anywhere, it's not going to build up here or blow any circuit break. All the ants will be accumulated in here if there is a short, and that'll just get hot. Yeah. Prevent any fires breaking out and stuff. Now I got this from a reprojection TV. It's just a jump cable that uses a connect from a run board to a board, and they just use a clip. They're using the clip boards together. Like over here, you got, you got them over here. They just used to jump from one part of the circuit to another. What I came to do, I take about two mil off the end of this plastic, and that clip inside there, the connector, just so happens to fit quite snugly on these little pins to plug this into the. I'll be using this to connect it safely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first set up your damn tripod. Okay, yours. Try and cut a little bit of end off that. Just so you can just start to see the metal part, the connector itself. But don't hit it because it might damage it. So you're going to make it so you can get a good firm connection. I have to squeeze it a little bit so it's tight. Okay, I'm going to go sideways. See how that works. No. I have to use a screwdriver and bend the inside so it's... Oh, just use a multi microphone so the clip bites harder. Hmm. Like that, but it's supposed to clip on a lot harder. Oh, I'll try that. There's a clip itself, it's actually supposed to go around that. But leave the plastic insulator on it for, for safety. That's supposed to go around there like that. The firmer you get a good connection, the better. I might just solder these on. The easy just to solder them on. That's what you're supposed to have there, so and you cut this. And the one side of this would be your active going through here. Active will come back here to the active of your load. And back the other side will go from, from your load to go back down to neutral. And obviously you can have an optional earth or if you're blowing something up to disconnect the earth. So the earth won't make chip circuit breakers. But don't touch the device you're trying to kill because you'll kill yourself. So it's got to be in there to protect. So I'm going to bend this back clip out. Tough on this one. That's a good strong connection there.
There you go. First here, active, we go through this wire. Just cut this off and I'll just solder it, heat shrink. Put a connector from here between your load. So I might just stick a power point between there. Obviously this is going to be the active, because active is going to go through this way. Come back out this one, so this will be the active. And that's obviously the neutral. So yeah, I'll cut this other thing off and do some soldering. Okay, we always kind of use this 1960s HPM double pole switch top power point. Obviously, we've got active going in through the pin here, through there, or live, labelled on this one. Comes out of here, up this wire, through this handing out of it, comes back out here. So, obviously, active is going to be the same, so it goes inactive. So yeah, and the neutral, whatever comes off from the active from the load, and back here. So the load, just, the load will just plug in as usual, just like a normal power point, except it's got something to take up all the amps, and the amps will accumulate in here, and if there's a short, hence a ballast. A bit like a, a water pressure um, reservoir or something, and something's blocked on a pump or something, pumping water, and there's a blockage or something, Instead of the pressure building up, they got something to build up pressure in, like a tank or something, or some sort of load. This is the same sort of thing. Just takes that, takes up, takes the pressure off the, um, so to speak, from your circuit. That's pretty well flat against that wire. It's a good connection in there. So neutral here. Just got to ballast it through the active here because the active is where all the current gets built up in. And I'll plug the earth in for safety. If you want to kill something and it's going to chip an earth breaker, you don't connect that. But yeah, I mean, you've got earth faults and stuff for something you want to kill, just be, be safe about it because. Earth leakages are dangerous. Hold of the bit gives a good bit of conductor to bite in there, so it's a good connection and not going to fall out. Oh, that goes in there. Make sure we're not pinching the insulation on that screw. It's got to be all conductor and a pure good connection. Not too tight, but that's it. It should look like in the back. Now I have to make some sort of panel to mount all this stuff on. Mount the heating element somewhere. That's not earth, so I'm not going to touch that. That you don't touch. Not only is it going to be hot, but it's not earth, so it's going to be dangerous. So that's going to be just a ballast. Switch on, off. Mount it that way on a panel. That'll sit up on something next to it. The wires will be all tucked away. And that's my ballast power point. Now if you wanna you could just put a switch in series of the earth. It switch off earth when there's whenever you want to kill something, but you do need to know the electrical safety and know what the hell you're doing to do stuff like that. Cause yeah, as I said, earth faults are dangerous. So yeah. Whenever active leaks to earth, it means earth or the metal part of anything that's earth to of an appliance would be electrified. So yeah, pays to know what you're doing when you're doing stuff like this. So yeah, I'm going to try and design a panel board. But for now, I'm going to have it all set out like this to test a battery charger. I hard wired a battery charger without the circuit breaker. Just plug it straight into the um, input of the transformer without that safety switch. And if something does happen, this is going to take all that current and ballast it. So yeah. I'm going to crank it up on a variator to be extra safe, so yeah. Let's give it a go. Okay, viewers are all set up ready to go. Just need to be plugged in. To the power, goes out to the power point. Active is in, that's in series of the active circuit, the ballast. 
my earths, jump to the cable, to the case. And then I'm gonna do one more funnel check to make sure everything's safe. Do a continuity check here. And I'll test from earth on the variac to earth on the um, appliance or the, the drop here, the um, suspected bad work component, whatever you want to call it. That bad thing means it's a closed circuit, so that's good. We've got a closed circuit earth. Now that I've done that test, I've got a, as well as a H4, a H3 I mean. Voltage DC, we're going to go to another test to see if any voltage comes out. As well as that light coming out of its output, to make sure if we've got any DC on its output. As well as um, testing if this charger even really works. It is only a Chinese thing, but yeah, I can't get this to connect properly here. Chuck that under the spring like that. Wrench it in there. Now, yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to see it on camera, but we'll see how that test turns out. Get the tripod set up so you guys can see. Alright. Alright, viewers, now I'm going to turn this thing bloody on, see what happens. Recording. Okay, we're all going to go move McVeary out close to the power point. Hang on for a second, you all. Alright, well, you can't see the multimeter on camera, but the ballast there, you've got to see the ballast and the charger in the same part of the picture. Alright, let's see what happens. It's on zero. Turn on, power's going up. Okay, that switch is burning out. Okay, we've got a fire there. Nothing on the output of the, of the charger. And you can see there's a burnout going on here. Alright viewers, I'm going to show you a close look at that bloody switch. I think this charger could be KO'd. And watch what happens. Yeah. See that? That's what I call a Chinese made malfunction right there. So, nothing in the output. She's toast. Yeah, the Variac barely even hummed. I bet you this might be hot. Oh yeah, that is hot. Oh yeah. See that? It's pretty divided. That consumes 2200 watts. That's probably about the same. So, whichever consumes more energy, that's always going to take out the um, heavy load off your com critical components. But I don't know what. It's actually burning it in there. It's not going to the load. It's just going up, back up to load, but not burning there, there, or there, or what it's doing. It's just burning that out straight away, so. And smoking out the jumper leads. So, this is, I don't know what's going on here. I bypass the switch and we've still got a fire at the switch. That, that's not working. So, um, yeah. I didn't have any of uh, those little cable, um, what do you call it, those little cable connectors that electricians use that connect the cables together. I just have to use the existing from the switch. So, with power going straight to the load here, there's still a fire at the switch, so. Nothing on its output still, so I think this could be KO'd. So yeah, that did get hot too. As you can see on the wood, that got hot. So yeah, thanks for watching.